Uh, and Yara, let's please start with you if we can. What can we expect over the next few hours? We've just seen uh, Sergei Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister, has rushed back to Switzerland to continue these talks. That's right. Well, the latest news we have is that Lavrov has arrived in Lausanne. We don't know if he's actually joined the talks yet, but he's at least landed in Geneva, as far as our information is. Also, sources have told Bloomberg News that basically the plan at this point is to come out with a framework understanding, um, whether that would be bullet points or a general overview of the major points of the deal that the two sides can agree on without going into too many details. That would give them a chance to have three more months till the June 30th deadline to actually work on the technical aspects and the detailed part of the accord, but it means they wouldn't have been able to get as detailed a document today as the U.S. at least had hoped for. Peter, uh, what's the reaction to this in, in, in Washington outside of the White House? It seems to me we've just made uh, an agreement to continue talking. I mean, that doesn't seem like meeting your deadline. Well, Matt, as you know, there are a lot of Republicans, even some Democrats, highly skeptical of these negotiations to begin with, and they're not going to be satisfied with this. It's pretty clear, but uh, the reality is, are they going to be prepared to stand in the way when the final deal, the real deadline, is July 1st? My sense right now is there going to be a lot of criticisms, a lot of complaints about this, certainly as they read the details, uh, but are they prepared to stand in the way? I think it's a very tough call, but unlikely that but they will. And I think the administration is hoping that they have enough in this document to be able to sell those skeptical lawmakers uh, that they should keep at this through July 1st. But, Peter, the first deadline was actually last week before the White House pushed it back a week, and that was when Congress was going to, if there wasn't a, a, a good deal in front of them, start putting forth more sanctions against Iran. Are we going to see that kind of legislation? Well, that's the test right now. This Corker Menendez legislation that would impose tougher sanctions, uh, it would uh, separately, I should say, allow Congress to review uh, any deal going forward, gives them Congress 60 days to, to do that. Um, the president has said, the White House has said the president would veto that legislation. So I think you're going to see a lot of rumblings, perhaps legislative efforts to impose tougher sanctions on Iran and to give congressional sign off. The question is whether or not this president will allow that to go through and whether Democrats up on Capitol Hill who still have a lot of sway over this, Matt. They could be the decisive votes here. Whether or not they would stand in the way of the president uh, moving closer to July 1st. At the end of the day, I think a lot of Democrats are going to be hesitant to do that, even if they have reservations about this deal. Uh, and, and Dear, let's, let's get back to you here. How does everything going on in the region, in the Gulf, in the Middle East, how is that impacting talks? You know, we are lined up against Iran in Yemen. We appear to be on the same side, fighting Islamic State in Iraq, also against Iran uh, in Syria. How does that either strengthen or weaken Iran's he hand here? in these talks. Yeah, it's incredibly complicated, all of those things you pointed out, not to mention the incredible antipathy that both Saudi Arabia and Israel, not to mention the United Arab Emirates, have for Iran. So some of our closest allies in the region um, really cannot stand Iran and don't want them to get this nuclear deal with us because they're afraid it will open the door to a larger kind of detente with the Islamic Republic. I would like to say, though, that the officials say that they have kept regional issues out of the talks, even though the issue of Yemen certainly came up last week. It's not something that has been part of the negotiations. So they've tried to keep those two things separate. I wanted to just second what Peter is saying, that I think it's going to be hard for lawmakers in the end if the administration is able to make its case and pitch the deal in as much detail as they're able to give, which probably will be in classified settings. So we may not get to find out all of those details right away while they're continuing to draft for the next three months. And I also just wanted to say there never really was a March 24th deadline. That was something Congress made up, but the real deadline the administration set was today, tonight at midnight Swiss time. So we'll see if they're able to pull out agreement on whatever they can, slap it together and call it a framework yeah. agreement um, or understanding, which is what we're expecting. Well, and dear, as we know, uh, deadlines in Washington do appear to be very fuzzy. Uh, and in, in Greece. Greece. And in Greece. And also deadlines in Greece and uh, Europe Europe as well. Obviously, uh, Secretary Kerry and President Obama now have to sell this to lawmakers if, in fact, we do get a framework deal. What's the situation like in Iran? Is the foreign minister of Iran fully empowered to cut a deal with the United States, or does he go home and have to sell this to the Ayatollah Khamenei, or perhaps get it passed by uh, the Majils, the parliament in Iran? 
Well, it's an excellent question, and the fact is that there is no way he could make any kind of a framework understanding in the first place without the Ayatollah Khamenei's approval because he is the supreme leader. And that has been a, a real obstacle because the Ayatollah has set incredibly tough conditions for Iran. And you see the hardliners coming out just yesterday and today and threatening um, Foreign Minister Zarif through the media saying that he should not make the concessions that the West is asking for. So I think that whatever is agreed upon today will have had to have had the implicit sign-off, if not literal sign-off, from the Ayatollah. What happens in the next three months is going to be really hard. They're going to be fighting over every line and comma in any technical agreement that they might get.